Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here with the opposition preview. We didn't have one for France because none of the French people wanted to speak to us. But we do have Mike here from Football Orange. Uh, Orange, I'm not sure how you say it. You'll tell me how to say it now in a second, Mike. But uh, yeah, he has came in and he's going to give us the lowdown on the Dutch team. So Mike, I suppose, tell us a bit about yourselves, uh, where you can find it and the correct maybe pron pronunciation of uh, of your uh, channel so i'm michael statham and uh i write to videos for football anya and it's dutch football in the english language we um yep do podcasts from the dutch national team dutch league uh yep play us abroad we do loads of articles on our website um fairly fairly um active on twitter so yeah go and check us out if you would like to find out some more we've got a youtube channel where we do like interviews with players podcasts website and then twitter all right brilliant so you sit very similar to ourselves uh of course um but uh you've got a huge following online so uh if you're in any way interested in listening to anything related to dutch football i would definitely encourage you guys to go and check them out um and by the end of this video i'm sure you'll see why as well um i just did a preview on Mike's channel um, from an Irish point of view. So we're going to get um, a little bit kind of of the the Dutch point of view. Obviously, we know we're, we're coming into this, obviously, after a 2-0 defeat to France. Um, the campaign has not gone well for Ireland at all. Uh, losing to Greece as well away from home. Uh, it's just not been a, a great start to the campaign. Obviously, a 1-0 loss, which wasn't uh, humiliating at all. It wasn't humiliating the other night either. But we have been down a lot of bodies and stuff like that but to, from a dutch point of view uh besides the game against france things have gone okay since how would you assess it i think that for voinal kuman who's coming as manager it was difficult because louis van Gaal was so recognizable to everyone and had that aura about him that he'd almost do no wrong and despite playing quite a defensive 5-3-2 throughout the world cup um he was getting results. So the, after the, some negativity to begin with, Van Gaal actually won people round. Um, Van Gaal came out in the media recently, didn't he, to sort of say they thought that the game was basically rigged against Argentina with the refereeing. Um, not a good look for him because he's been so successful with the Netherlands. So anyway, Koeman comes in and switches the formation to a 4-3-3, which people would expect from the Netherlands. And there were some poor results in the Nations League. The Netherlands had their own home tournament um, where they were obviously at home to, to play the semi-final and then the final if they got through. But a poor defeat to Croatia was followed by a poor defeat to Italy. Defence looked porous. Uh, then starting the qualifying campaign against France, and that was a, a heavy defeat. The, even the win against Gibraltar was only 3-0 at home and it and it, it was it was tepid. Oh, I would not want to rewatch that game. So we've got a Netherlands team that then switched to back to the 5-3-2 against Greece and won 3-0. Was it a stellar performance? No. I was quick to sort of caution that I think uh, it was hmm, Greece being terrible rather than the Netherlands being particularly good. But we did see the best out of Denz Dumfries again down the right wing, getting a hat-trick of assists, playing, playing again in that right wing back role. Playing on that, that role uh, on the right side of a, a five at the back is hugely different to him to being a right back in a back four. So he is actually one of our best weapons, um, which is weird, talking about a defender like that. But yeah, he's so good with his runs into the box, his overlap, overlapping runs. Um, and where we are at the minute is where we were at a place about a week ago where if Kuman lost against Greece or Drew, I think he would have had lots of people after his head. There already are people very sceptical that he's still in the job. But that performance has kind of relaxed that feel. And if I the Republic of Ireland, then... I think he's in a safe footing for a, a little while. They'll qualify for the Euros. They'll go into the Euros with Koeman in charge. But it could have been that a poor result or two could mean that he loses his job. Um, and that win against Greece has changed a lot. Yeah, I think uh, it's been sim similar with Stephen Kenny is that if, if we go into this game now um, against Holland and we, we don't win, the FAI have kind of said that uh, he's basically gone, gone to be left relieved of his duties i suppose uh, in a nicer term um but it, it a result against holland like a win could change all that as well 
Uh, the only thing is, I, I look at the the quality that the Dutch team have in comparison to what the Irish team have. Obviously, we have team spirit, and we have um, you know the we have great pride in the way we play and stuff like that. But I do think that the Dutch team are, are probably going to be too strong for us. But uh, you, you mentioned Dumfries there as kind of your one to watch. Is is there anyone else who Ireland should be fearful of? Um, from I know you said uh, Memphis Depay is out of the game. Yeah, so you're missing Ferguson, the Netherlands are missing Memphis Depay. The Netherlands is top goal scorer and such a an influential player with the way that the Netherlands can play on the floor, but Memphis is also quite physical because they can have this, the qualities of a good striker too. Um, they're playing Valt Vekos at the moment and people know him from his time in the Premier League uh, and his two goals against Argentina in the World Cup. He's full of passion and everything and uh, all that tenacity that you get with that, but not the best quality striker. So I feel like the players that play around him are going to be more, more important in this game. You've got Cody Hapo, of course, from Liverpool and Chavis Simons. He might be the one that people are less aware of um, unless you've got a keen eye on European football. So Simons is a teenager, a great season with PSV. PSG activates his buyback clause. He's now at Leipzig in Germany on loan. And he's an attacking midfielder. Lots of technique. And um, he he's someone that will... He'll, he'll, he'll try the outrageous to try and open up a defence and half the time it'll work and half the time he does look like quite a young kid still. But he's he's a, he's getting into a starting spot now for the Netherlands, which people want to see because he does offer something really rather different. Arguably the biggest attacking talent the Netherlands have had since Arjen Robben, who some people would suggest. So in time, he could be massive for the Dutch. Um, then, of course, you've got Frank de Jong, who's the controller in midfield. And then a whole bunch of centre backs who are really quite, really quite good. I think the Netherlands is now their main strength is their defence, and that that's why they're trying to make the most of it tactically with their formation. Uh, Van Dijk had a decent game against Greece, but has been error prone. So Natanake has been the main um, consistent defender, really strong. Um, having to, he could be injured for this one, but I don't think that matters. I mean, there's Stefan de Vlaai, there's Matthijs de Ligt, people who will know, you know, from European football, really good centre-backs. So that's where the Netherlands' kind of strength lies as well. It's their centre-backs. And now we're looking for people like Simons and Hapo to come up with the quality up front. I think that's where the Irish uh, fans will be, you know, worried is, is players like that, you know. Um, as well as that, you've got the issues. Well, Ireland have the issues at left wing back where we don't know who's going to be, st- be starting there. Ender Stevens got injured the other night. James McLean came off at half time. You know, will he start McLean against Holland? Who's to know? There's a lot of things going around about McLean playing for Wrexham in League Two. He feels quite strongly about that. He feels as though whether he's playing League Two or whatever, um, it's not going to hamper the quality of his performances. You now, I have to say, he was very good against France. So yeah, you have to kind of go with that for the moment. But I just think uh, defensively, um, it's it's not a strong point. So um, it would be interesting. You have a natural left wing back there in Ryan Manning. You'd wonder, will he go with him? Or is this game going to be a game where he feels as though it's not going to be enough? But you know, he's, he's brought players in the past who were maybe not experienced like Gavin Bazunu and... Gave him his debut in a game against Luxembourg when we lost that game, but still Gavin Bazuna came in and done really well. And he was playing League One with uh, Rochdale at the time, and uh, that was the start of his international career and probably the start of his career really, where uh, people started to kind of take notice of him properly. So, yeah, we're, we're uh, like, I do think Ryan Manning would be the obvious show to come in there, but for Stephen Kenny for some reason hasn't picked him and hasn't picked him for squads in in the past. Um, so we don't know what's going on there or why, why Manning hasn't been playing, but he's been doing quite well at his club. So that's kind of where we're worried about. Well, I definitely am because you mentioned about Dumfries there and about how, how good he's been. Dembele um, was so good against Enda Stevens the other night and Enda Stevens just looked a yard off it, to be honest with you. And then he ended up going off with, with an injury uh, at one point. Then uh, he went down with an injury, sorry, at one point and then was subbed off, I think, at half time. So that's kind of the area where generally we're defensively sound. Like our centre backs are quite solid. Our our probably best uh, area of the pitch in terms of our best players probably be defence as well. I think similar to uh, Cummins that Stephen Kenny's gone right. Well, the best way to to 
get our best center backs on the pitch is play with a back three and then whatever way you're going to do it's going to be a 3-4-3 when we're in attack maybe against lesser teams a 3-5-2 when it's against uh, bigger nations like yourselves yeah um the netherlands probably will have to continue playing that formation now i remember it in the world cup they were playing it against qatar <laughs> and it was like well we're gonna win this game why do we need to do that but it was to practice the formation for when it came to major tournaments and it was still in the major tournament, but those latter rounds of it. So I think we'll, we'll see the same formation because it gets best at the players and it prepares the Netherlands for tournaments when you're playing against the strongest teams in, in, in the world and in Europe. And I think that's what this does again for Koeman. I think this formation changes. I, I, I've theorized in my head that Van Gaal has got, got involved with Koeman and, advised him to change formation back um he was in the stand uh against greece so it makes you think is it has he had any part to play with that neverland sounds to be delighted though of course if that if that did happen that he's had a word with kuman to change things back um and get the best out of his players that he got that's what you got to do it's national football isn't it you you, you no matter if you're Ireland or netherlands whoever do do, do what you gotta do the best of what you've got because um you wouldn't think for the Netherlands that defenders would be their main strength. Normally, it's the attacking players. But now, um, three quarters of Dutch Premier League players are either defenders or goalkeepers. And there's got to be a reason for that. Um, I think there's been a bit of a shift in the Netherlands with the way that they're brought up, really. Yeah, because Johan Cruyff would probably be wondering um, yeah. what's happened to all the attackers because he's produced so many good attackers over the years and maybe I think if you're looking at defend defensively even in that World Cup final like you kind of struggle defensively to say who was absolutely world class I know you said John Heitinger and stuff like that but he was never really I suppose that elite level I know he played for Atletico mm. Madrid and stuff like that but he was never that top top level whereas obviously you have players like De Ligt now and Van Dijk and Ake who are winning things consistently um, at the top level top elite level so it's interesting to see that shift um, I still think you you kind of are still reliant on kind of older players like Daily Blind. I'm, I don't know how he still gets in the squad, but he might mm. bring something that maybe we don't see, but you guys see. No, no, you're absolutely right. Um, we don't see what he brings, and um, Daily Blind is we would consider a weak link uh, on the Netherlands' left wing back position. However, he's always been selected in the squads. It was it was there was a video of uh, this guy outside the Netherlands ground. Um, before the Greece game and he saw Dale Blint, Martin Delone and Val Verhorst all starting in a defensive 5-3-2 formation and he said I might just drive back home and it, it made quite a few waves on online um, I'm sure he enjoyed the game after it was a 3-0 win but yeah Blint has come into his own I think going to Spain and playing for Gerona um, in La Liga that's helped him how he still gets to the squad I don't know because there's players such as Davy Klaassen that were still hanging around as well Um and he needs to be deselected for a long time. But Blint, I think he's someone who adds a lot with his experience. But I just feel like I'm talking like Cumin would. <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't think that he should be selected because there are players that are more deserving that deserve the, the chance. I mean, the backup left back would be Quinchilly Hartman, who's a fine old left left back, and he definitely would um, do well in that left wing back position getting forward. So, yeah, that Dillon, I still think could be replaced before this game. But I wouldn't be surprised if he plays again. He wins the ball back a lot, but also loses it a lot. So he's a great character. He scored a goal against Greece. Great. Sadie Vechos also scored a goal. But we have better. I think it, when you win 3 0, it's hard to complain. But there are, there, there are some players that could definitely be switched out for more capable people, more high quality footballers. But the Netherlands won. And um, Blint still brings something on the ball, but it's off the ball defensively. If you can get in behind him, um, or run at him, he struggles. Yeah, it might be an area which Stephen Kenny uh, tries to get someone someone on there, but the, the, the issue is our right wing back it could be someone like Alan Brown, whereas if he was maybe looking at it, he could go with someone like Chiodozi or Benny, who's yeah. absolutely rapid, um, and, and play him right wing back, but I don't think he will. He likes to play him in more of a forward role. But uh, I suppose uh, just lastly, just we'll, we'll get a, a score prediction off you. Uh, and I'll give mine. I suppose I, uh, I'll go with mine first. Uh, I gave it on your show there. I, I think uh, Holland will win 2-1. Um, and I think that will be the end of, of the Kenny era. Uh, likely, anyway. I think it just at this stage, uh, it's it's just become a, a case where 
the cycle has come to an end. We'd be grateful that he's brought through so many players. But if we win the game, and uh, then I suppose he hangs on for a little bit more time, uh, definitely to the end of the campaign. But if if he doesn't, then I think his his time is spared at this point. Um, but what's your uh, optimistic um, <laughs> score prediction for yourself? So the Netherlands, I think, will win after seeing them play against Greece. Uh, I've got a bit more confidence about about the game now, which I didn't before. Ferguson being injured too. Um, I feel like I should reveal everything about my prediction because people need to go in and watch once they finish with the with your own show. They need to come and watch our show and football Daniel, our preview for the game. We've got you on, Paul. Um, I, I, I said two nil over there as well. Um, I will again here. I, th- I think the first goal was be massive. And if the Netherlands get it, it's any more comfortable game. If Ireland get it, then oh, that's gonna change the game completely on its head. I think confidence could drop with a Cumin team um, who I, I don't believe has got strong man management skills, you know, to turn that 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 shift around. Um, I'm, I am going to stick with my prediction. I think it could be 2-0. But I wouldn't be surprised if it goes any cut anyway. I still think that the Dutch could crumble, which I predicted before the international break, that they'd have a poor result or two out of the Greece and Ireland games because we still think that Greece and Republic of Ireland are teams that can get into that second spot uh but now having seen the, the first game of a break for both the dutch and, and republic of ireland I, I still think that now this will be a 2-0 win um but i'm not saying it with huge confidence let's just say that yeah well you're probably more confident than us but uh mike um yeah. i suppose before we go let, let people know where they can find you i know we did a preview as well where they can watch that um and yeah i suppose all your your, your platforms that you're on and where people can find you so on and so forth so i'm on twitter as area busy mike uh name of the league if you want to check us out football adanya it's football same as in english and then adanya is orange but replace the g with a j and yeah, we do Dutch football English language that covers the league, that covers the Dutch national team. We post a lot on the website, articles every day. For years, we've been doing that now. And um, we have a decent following on, on Twitter or on X, whatever you want to call it. If you want to catch up with us on there, we are on YouTube as well, where we have our player interviews and our own podcasts. So yeah, find us. <laughs> Yeah, um, I de- I've been following now for a few months and it's very, very informative. And um, obviously the lads have come on now. So we'll be keeping a keen eye on stuff going forward as well. Um, but Mike, uh, listen, thanks very much for coming on the show. Uh, guys, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching, obviously on YouTube, leave your thoughts in the comments. If you're listening on podcasts or whatever, uh, leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed the show and stuff like that so we'll speak to you all later enjoy the game if you're going to it enjoy the game at home if you're going to watch it at home and we'll speak to you all later thanks very much for watching